Hi, welcome to the non-ferrous magnet demonstration. This is not what you would call an optimized non-ferrous magnet demonstration. This is basically a proof of concept. Okay, uh, what we have here is we have a standard magnet coil that's in this white ring out here. Underneath the blue tape is our core which consists of a non-ferrous brass washer. Suspended in front of the magnet by a string is our target, the thing we are trying to attract. That again is another uh, non-ferrous brass washer. Okay, what I'm going to do is turn the power on to the magnet and you're going to see that the target is being attracted to the core underneath the blue tape. Now I'm going to turn the power off and it's going to go back and it's going to go back to its rest position. Now, what we have going on here, what we're doing is we're driving this coil from a frequency source that's producing a sine wave at about one kilohertz. That is driving into an old broken down stereo amplifier to kick up that signal into a higher current, higher voltage signal that can drive the coil a little better. Uh, this stereo amplifier happens to have its right channel broken, so only the left channel is operational, but that's good enough for what we need to do. What, I'm gonna, what we have over here is the oscilloscope, the oscilloscope set up. And, hold on, let me get the camera adjusted. I'm going to turn the power back on. Okay, the green trace is the is the voltage coming from the signal source. The yellow trace is coming from a little pickup coil that I have sitting right next to the magnet coil. So I can monitor the signal. And what I'm going to do is turn up the amplifier to show you, or turn up the volume on the stereo amplifier to show you we're pretty much pegged out. We're already now going nonlinear. So we're not really pumping that much voltage into this thing. We're pumping about, well, I don't know, because again, this is the voltage off the secondary uh, pickup coil here. It's not really the voltage in the actual primary. So how do we make this thing better? Well, first of all, because the way this operates is more like a transformer than a magnet. Okay, what's happening is the magnet coil is acting like a primary and the core and the target are acting like secondaries of a transformer. And because the core and the secondary are both brass washers, they're going to react to the magnetic field generated by the coil the same way. Okay, so they're both going to induce like currents. And we know from new magnetism that like currents attract and therefore the two secondaries are going to attract each other. Okay, so the way to make this more optimal is not to use a magnet core. We need to use more of a transformer core, which will allow us to go to a higher frequency. And so the optimal way to go isn't using magnet core would be to use more of the way a magnetic field is generated for a thing called induction heating. Because induction heating, you're generating magnetic fields, changing magnetic fields with such intensity that they could actually get one of these things to melt. And then that's when you have, and that's when you have enough current being induced in these cores to make them stick like glue to each other. Okay, that is a more appropriate way to go to make this a more optimal experiment. Right now we're going to put this on hold. The purpose of these experiments is for me to ferret out and find any other missing pieces of the magnetic field theory that I'm looking for to complete new electromagnetism. But because there's nothing here that can't be explained with what we already have, um, this is, I'm not going to go further with this right now. Uh, right now the objective is to get the new ethereal mechanics papers out. I'm writing um, almost finished with the first chapter of New Gravity, uh, which will be put out to the patronage within a week or two. There's going to be no videos next week, okay, because I'm trying to get that paper out, and I think next week is the weekend I'm going to have that paper out, the, the first chapter of it anyway. But we may come back to this at a later time after the ethereal mechanic papers are out. 
Uh, now, now we'll have a lot of free time to do other things, catch up on all the other experiments. And we may actually go build ourselves or even go buy an induction heating unit uh, and actually try this experiment. If we, see if we can't purchase one instead of having to build one. Uh, but here's something I give out to my patronage. They do sell induction heating cooktops that work by inducing currents in the bottoms of your pans. And I'm wondering, uh, I'm not going to do this now because this is low priority for me right now, but if somebody wants to produce a video and give me a link to it so I can put it out to everybody, try using an induction cooktop heater and a couple of brass washers and see if you can't make them attract. That would be really, that would be really cool. Uh, but anyway, this is it for now. Uh, we're going to put this on hold because there's really no new theory to be learned here. And, um, and thank you for watching. And uh, we'll have the Ethereal Mechanics New Gravity. Hopefully all the, all the chapters should be done before July. That's where I'm, I'm going for. So we're going to be kind of light on videos in the next couple of weeks. But there should be, um, for the patronage, the advanced release of the animations and the chapters uh, leading up to the final, the public release of the paper and animations, hopefully in July or even August. Anyway, thank you very much.